Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? Something to think about. Now onto the stories. Case file number 925, written by EasyNat20. The universe casts a spell, darkness. My group of friends and I were deep into a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, huddled around the table in my basement. We had been playing for hours, completely immersed in the world we had created, to the detriment of other responsibilities. I can't claim we're the epitome of health, but we enjoy life and the fantasies we create from it. Besides, this is a once in a month event. It was my turn to make a choice. I was just about to roll the dice, perception roll, when everything went completely dark. At first I thought the power had gone out. Then I realized that the darkness was just in front of my eyes, but it was complete. It was like some kind of veil had been placed over my vision, blindfolded without a blindfold, with no edge where light peeks through. I heard panicked whispers from all my friends around me. What's happening? I can't see anything. How are you doing this? I reached out and touched the table in front of me, trying to orient myself and make sure reality still existed. Thankfully it did. I didn't really feel any discomfort, just stress and total confusion. I said, Okay guys, I'm not crazy, right? No one can see anything either? Everyone pretty much terrifyingly stated yes. Then the darkness lifted and my vision returned. There was no warning. I blinked a few times, trying to adjust to the now painfully bright lights of my basement lamps, which really were rather dim. We set the ambiance intentionally so for these D&D sessions. And no, we don't cosplay as elves and orcs, although I might want to. My friends were all looking at me and then each other. No one was speaking. I spoke first after the light returned. So we're all agreed that we all went temporarily blind and that we're not crazy, right? Everyone nodded. We uh, went upstairs. It was evening, dark out, which added to the tension, I suppose. None of us had a clue. Collective delusion? Something in the snacks we ate? It's never happened again. Even though it took us a few days to feel relatively sane, we're all right now. We joke around with Mick, who always plays as a warlock, that somehow he has actual real powers in life and showed us a glimpse of his curses. Case Notes File 925 The universe casts a spell. Darkness. I would love to believe that there's real magic in real life, that there's a Hogwarts letter still coming my way. I know I waited a long time when I was a teenager. Never arrived and I'm still rather irritable about that. What can you do? I definitely wouldn't be a warlock. Would not be in the Slytherin camp. Maybe Gryffindor, maybe Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff is just kinda there. No one really wants to be in it but they're not a threat. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know, maybe they'd make good cooks I guess? They want to please others? Nothing wrong with that. So discounting Mick's warlock prowess, there's many stories about this where the sun kind of flickers off and then their people in this specific area are plunged into total darkness, often described also as without audio, although you guys were able to speak to each other so it might not be related, but it does seem very similar at least in the light spectrum. Indeed I don't, I never thought it had anything to do with the sun itself, I think it's some sort of block on processing light information. I guess in a sense everyone was made blind. And you know, a disturbing thought, what if this is related to the dead pixel in space-time? Or recently on Tuesday we learned that there's a pinball size version now. Maybe it was really large for a second and then shrunk back down. Maybe it was there and no one noticed it, if it's small enough. I don't know if it varies in size quickly, dramatically, what exactly it is, but it sounds like what I would think would happen if you're inside of it. Case fall number 926, written by Confused Milky. Can a human being teleport? It was just another ordinary day at the office, clear skies and terrible coffee. I was working on a task with my colleague, Sandra, when she vanished. She was sitting across from me on our computer, typing away, and then she was gone, just like that. I blinked a few times thinking I was hallucinating, but she was no longer there. I looked around the room thinking she'd just left for a moment, but there was no sign of her. To be clear, I didn't see her literally fade away. I was looking at my computer screen, having just seen her seconds before, looked back over and then she's gone. 
I'm pretty damn sure she's not a ninja, so it was odd and I started to get a little worried. I sent her a text and asked her where she went so quickly. Thinking maybe something had happened to her, I got up and walked around. I checked the kitchen and the bathrooms. I know it seems excessive, but the way she left felt so abnormal, especially for her. She never seems to use the bathroom or get up for much, that I wanted to make sure everything was okay. Maybe she needed help with something? Eventually, I found her asleep in the conference room, which was empty. This made no sense. It was mid-afternoon, not lunch break or a normal break. I gently woke her up, thinking she might be ill. I told her, Why did you get up and leave your desk so quickly? Are you feeling okay? She says, I don't remember that. The last thing I remember is reminding you of the Q4 report deadline. She had mentioned that to me a couple minutes before her vanishing. Neither of us really know what happened. She agreed to get a medical checkup just to be sure, but to me the weirdest part is how she left the desk. It was so quiet, and she'd have to pass by my peripheral vision on my right to leave. Our desks are aligned next to each other and blocked by a wall on our left side, but I saw absolutely nothing. How is that possible? Case notes are file 926. Can a human being teleport? So I don't think we can discount the mundane possibility that you were just extremely engrossed in whatever project or assignment you were working on, and you blocked out peripheral vision and sound. It can happen. Though, if that was the case, I imagine it would happen to you more often. But it, uh, maybe not, because you say that she never really gets up. Now, that explains it to an extent how she could leave so suddenly, but it's not really an explanation for why she was sleeping in the conference room. That is weird, and not knowing, remembering going there? I mean, yeah, maybe it is a medical issue, but mm, that does make it a bit more glitchy to me. If I had to assign it a glitch, it would be probably a DOP, and affecting a human being, and this has been known to happen. There was a story a really long time, like one of the first ones I read, where a kid was going down a water slide, never came out of the other end. Even though other kids eventually were pushed through, they, they went through fine, and then eventually the kid did emerge like 15-20 minutes later, like nothing happened. So they really were in the slide, de-rendered completely, and then re-rendered later on. I don't think there was any description of how the kid felt after, but if, if I had to guess, if this happens to someone that they probably don't feel particularly good after, so if this happened to her, and maybe she re-rendered in the conference room, a bit further away but still pretty close in the same general area, of the office. Well, yeah, she wouldn't feel good. I mean, can this just happen to anyone at any time? Can you re-render anywhere? Disappear in your chair and then re-render up in the sky and just fall down to your death? I've never heard of that happening, thankfully. So maybe there are rules, sort of, governing how this can work, but I still don't think it's intentional. Something weird is going on there. Bonus file, written by Analytics Fun 42 The Devil's Laptop. I'm a uni student, just a typical dude. I'd been studying and playing video games, mostly Overwatch 2, the past few months. Tonight I was working on my laptop, listening to classical music while I typed away working on my assignment. Music helps me to focus. One song ends, and then there's nothing queued up after, which is odd. Spotify always queues up another one no matter how many I've been listening to. I thought it was a Wi-Fi connection problem. My Wi-Fi was disconnected after all. Not that big a deal. I can set up a hotspot through my phone network if I need to. Before I could get that set up, I started to hear a low rumble, very low frequency sound. I realized that they were coming from somewhere deeper within my laptop. It was kind of like some static or feedback, but it was so distorted and harsh that it sounded unsettling. The noises were amplifying, getting louder and more erratic. I couldn't find the source. I tried closing all of my programs and restarting the computer, but the noises persisted. So I turned the damn thing off entirely. It's still producing this absurdly scary noise. I have no other speakers, just AirPods, but they were making no noise. Whatever this noise I was hearing became muffled if I put the AirPods in my ears. I unplugged the laptop and held it at arm's length. It felt hot, even though it was unplugged and turned off. Maybe something happened to the battery? The sound just wouldn't shut the hell up like a damn fire alarm warning beep. I felt like Phoebe from Friends but with a much more expensive device. 
and in a much more strange circumstance, because this noise was rattling inside of my body. It was unlike anything I've ever heard before, and I wish I could describe it better. I can say it didn't sound extraordinarily loud. Potent would be a better word. After about an hour, it gradually started to fade out. I was trying to distract myself on my bed by scrolling through Instagram while waiting for it to stop. My thinking was the battery was drained, so whatever was causing the noise stopped from lack of energy. But, I booted the laptop up to test this theory and it booted fine. There was still 85% battery left. I didn't plug it back in until after starting it up. So yeah, that's it, some kind of demonic laptop experience. Never shared the story with anyone and I never planned to outside of here. Case notes for the bonus file. The Devil's Laptop. So I do doubt that a demon is responsible for this, but perhaps a spirit or malicious entity, or just a spirit trying to communicate with you. Maybe someone you know. We know in many stories in the past where spirits can manipulate the EM spectrum, and really, they are literally just reverberations, energy in the, uh, the spectrum, which is just excitations of a field. But energy is, can be converted to and from, it's just matter has so much energy it's ridiculous. So that could be partly why it's so hard for an entity, a spirit, to interact with the world because there's just a small amount of energy there and they're only a fragment of the soul of whoever passed away. So given that, yeah, it'd be hard to manipulate the real world, hard to move objects and stuff like that, but a laptop moving the electrons, controlling those to the specific state where it's just binary code and able to influence a program in a computer, I could see that. And yet the laptop was off. But the battery is still there, so there is energy. Maybe they can interface with that without using a lot of it. And that would explain why it was still feeling very hot, even though it was off and unplugged. Presumably, you know, you don't mention having to replace the battery later on, so that's my guess. There was some entity trying to con connect with you, but couldn't quite figure out how to make it say words. It was just weird, random noises. If you can control the EM spectrum, that doesn't mean you can figure out how to make it produce sound, like talk through it. That would probably take eons to figure out, if it's even possible. To manipulate it to produce random noise? Sure, I could see that being possible. Just from like a desperate spirit trying to communicate. And there you go. Another end to the story. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like, comment if you thought of something cool. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, and that'll do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.